All right. What we're going to talk about are the fundamentals of marksmanship. You guys have probably heard this before, have you not? So we have four fundamentals that we utilize to allow us to be successful with uh, the practice of shooting guns. Would you agree? What are those four fundamental baseline things that we have to do to be able to deliver a well-aimed shot? So we would say breathing is one. Trigger squeeze, position, aiming. So let's, let's, let's break it down like this. It's aiming, breathing, trigger control, and a steady position. Do we agree? All right. Now, how many of you have been out to a rifle range or a zeroing range, 25 meter range, and have either seen the condition where yourself or somebody else had been shooting a couple of rounds, and the rounds were strung up and down. Have you seen that condition? Usually the response you get is something along the lines of, watch your breathing. Would you agree? What that person has just denoted to you, that when they say that for that condition, that they could fill a thimble with, their, with the amount of marksmanship knowledge they have. Okay. They have just 100% incorrectly diagnosed an issue that you or somebody else is having, and they have no other way other than the man in the moon to blame it on the one thing that nobody truly, really, truly understands, and that's this breathing thing. Okay. So <clears throat> the way I'm going to cover fundamentals is I'm going to cover it from the least important, even though all of these things are important, from its least importance to its greatest importance, okay? So what do you think in those four things may be the least important of the four things? Position. Why? Position's a luxury. Position's a luxury. Why do you think I say position's a luxury? I was discussing here earlier with, a, with one of you guys that I said, you know, the one thing about rifles and the one thing about fighting with rifles is, you know, you don't walk across the country laying on your belly, okay? Does that make sense? You, every fight you get into, you're not going to be laying in a perfect prone position, are you? So I would say position's a luxury. With that position... With that position, that position has to provide a few things. Arden Anderson, if you would. He press forward on the bipod. He is not pushing forward hard. He is just taking a little bit of the motion out, just slightly pushing forward on the bipod. All right? Let's go rearward. What you will notice about Sergeant Anderson is he has a high, firm pistol grip. There are some common elements to his position that are going to allow him to be successful and consistent. Look at how he, how high he's grabbing that pistol grip. The pistol grip of the weapon is high into the web of that hand, and his hand is naturally wrapped around that pistol grip, and he is taking that uh, rifle and pulling it back into his shoulder. Okay? Is he doing it really, really hard? No, he's doing it firmly. Okay? The next thing you're going to notice is he's made a whole lot of triangles with his body. Pretty, would, would we agree that a triangle is a fairly, it's not the strongest geometrical shape, but it is one of the strongest geometrical shapes we have in nature. Would you agree? Look at his body and how he is uh, geometrically set himself up behind this gun. You have a triangle from this hand to this elbow that is in full contact with the ground. That triangle comes back up here to the shoulder, okay? That buttstock of that rifle is firm into the pocket of the shoulder, and that the, what the, he allows the rifle to complete that triangle. Would you agree? All right, that's a pretty strong area here. If you look at the next triangle he's got, he comes from his shoulder to his elbow, and he is supporting the weapon under here. Back up. 
right? He's, we got two triangles and we're stacking tolerances, okay? Once he has done that, when he, does, when, when he has those triangles and everything's correct, notice his shoulders. Is his shoulders like this? His shoulders are square and flat right across the top. He is not in some sort of weird contorted position, okay? His shoulders are square across the top. The rifle butt is firm in the, in the pocket of his shoulder. And he has, how, how, many, how many of y'all know how much one of these heads weigh? How much, is, how much is a head? It's about eight pounds. It's about eight pounds. And that's a big head and it's full of big brains and I use it. The average human head is about eight pounds. That's half the weight of this rifle. Would you agree? The rifle's about 16 pounds. That's half the weight of the rifle he's putting on the buttstock. So would you want to lightly place it on the buttstock? No. Let me show you how Norm actually places his head on the buttstock. He lifts his head up, puts his chin, the edge of his chin on the buttstock, and then presses his head down firmly onto that freaking buttstock. All right? If you, if you were to see it from this side, it almost looks like he's got a pack of quarters rolled over on the other side of the uh, cheek piece. Would you agree? The other thing, he has, he, has a, he has the weapon adjusted in such a way that his eyeball is looking straight through the scope. Now, particularly, this is when we would start fitting, all right? We would start moving this uh, cheek piece up and down to allow that to happen. But when he's in position, he wants that eyeball to be able to look straight through that scope or those sights. Does that make sense? Yeah, we will fit. And, th and that's one of the things we're going to do when we talk about fitting you guys to these guns, okay? Let's go on back. So what's going to happen is when this rifle recoils, boom, the rifle's going to come straight back into this shoulder and he's got as much of his body behind this rifle as he can, okay? He's got the lunch muscle in contact with the ground. He's got his hips square, okay? And his legs are trailing out in an open triangle. Would you agree? Are his, notice what he's not doing. When I do this, and for some reason, I don't know what it is about reserve soldiers, when they get on the range, they want to do this while they're, while they're shooting. They want to just play with that, with, that, oh, with that foot. That puts movement out of the rifle. Anything you do in a position should do nothing more than Keep movement from being displayed out to the front of the rifle. Would you agree? All right. That would be a classic prone position with this rifle. Okay. Now, we're going to go to a kneeling position. Now, we will do position analysis. We will do work with positions, and we will work with dry firing with you guys. Same thing. <clears throat> What I, want, I want, what I want you to know is how much did not change between, between position to position. Head position is pretty much the same, same, is it not? He put his head on that rifle the same way. That rifle butt is almost in the same spot in the pocket of his shoulder. Would you agree? Well, we're going to talk about that shoulder pocket here in a minute. We still have, an, we ha still have a, a triangle here. Would you agree? The only difference from position to position is what this portion down on the body is doing. Would you agree? Now, if I needed to shoot a shot from the kneeling position and I had no other support, could I get my buddy? How would I use my buddy for support? Heck yeah, man. I might lay, it across his lay that rifle across his shoulder. Now, hey buddy, you might want to have some glasses on. All right, because there might be a little flash being suppressed. Lay that rifle out there and cover your face. All right? Now, the both of you are going to breathe at the same time, in, out. He's going to tell me when to hold, and I'm going to sit as still as I can, and he's going to place a shot. Does that make sense? That it would be a supported kneeling. Are we going to shoot this out on the, on the range? Probably not. Okay, depending on the time and depending on how giving he allows us to do. But I would say it's probably not a bad idea. All right. But look at where he's, what he's done with this forward elbow. 
is this, is, there's the point of his elbow. There's the, there's the pointy portion of his elbow right here. Notice it is not on his knee. He's got that flat portion back here in contact with this flat portion of his knee. Okay? His boot is in contact with his butt. Why? For support. Basically, he's, used a lot, you, he's allowing all of his weight to come down onto, onto here. So when he fires his gun and it makes recoil, it's less likely to move the position. The easiest way to tell if somebody has a good or bad position is to see how much they move in and out of that uh, position. Another way you can do to tell a, a good or bad position is to move them right or left. And if they fall over, so he's moving with me. He's not falling over. Does that make sense? All right, let's go to the standing position. <laughs> now, you have two positions when you're on your hind leg. You have the standing and the offhand position. Does anybody know the difference? Target shooter shoots standing. It's a bladed position. All right. Demonstrate that, Mr. Mr. Norman. What he's using in the standing position for support, he takes this hand here and he places it underneath the rifle and the back portion of this arm under here is in contact with his body. All right? We can also utilize it, that mag. Got to help you out there. How far away do you think you should be able to positively engage a bad guy in the standing position? Pretty far. How far is pretty far? It's shooter dependent. I think everybody here, when we're done, should be able to shoot any type silhouette by time we're done here at 200 yards. You're going to be able to do it. All right? You're going to wind up saying, oh, that's pretty easy. All right? Shooter dependent, hell, there's some matches where we do stupid stuff and we'll shoot targets out to 600 just shooting standing, right? Crazy stuff. Now, yeah, now we're going to talk about the offhand position. The offhand position is a boxer-style position. It's a more combat-related position. It is utilized when you have to do shots like snapshots. you got to bring it up, align the sights, and stick it now, all right? That is the offhand position. Technically, the reason it got its name is it shot off the hands, okay? Instead of standing, being off the body. Would that make sense? All right. So now we're educated enough to know that when people start talking about offhand or standing, very often they may not realize that both of those, those two things are variations of one position. Do you, would you agree now? Okay. When would I utilize in a combat situation an offhand position? Against the wall. When else? When else? Immediate contact. You're, you're zero to 50 meters away from somebody. Bam! I got I to gotta stick one down at him. Okay? CQB. CQB is what I'm trying to guide it in. In a CQB situation, you will utilize the offhand position. Because you understand you're moving with the element with this rifle. Would you agree? So... If you're moving with the element with this rifle, do you think it's possible that you may have to take a snapshot? Bring it up, press through. Okay? We're going we're gonna to we're gonna do that out on the range. We're going to shoot standing out on the range. Standing can be a supported position. Go ahead and gain a standing position. If all I've got is to shoot over the top of something, hell, I can, I can stick that up against a Humvee. Would you agree? I can put that up against a wall, okay? But you have to notice what he's using for support, okay? With this particular weapon system, how many of you have been told that you can't shoot an M16 rifle with the magazine off the ground? You ever been told that? Have you ever heard that? Okay? You can shoot an M16 rifle with the magazine on the ground in contact with the ground. You know that, right? And that's okay. There was a myth, and it has been a myth, uh, propagated for years, that you cannot shoot an M16 with the magazine on the ground. What that comes from is this gun. You don't need to be shooting this gun with the magazine on the ground. Do you understand why? 
It's how the magazine locks in. You know, on the M16, when you slide that, when you guide slide, listen for that audible click, and the magazine inserts into the magazine well, there's a little square back here that engages the magazine and holds it into the rifle, okay? The way this magazine goes in the rifle is there's a little hole here, okay? And there's this little bridge back here. When it goes into the rifle, it goes in at a slight angle. And on the older style stocks, there'll be a little bit of movement, okay? When you shoot these rifles, please don't shoot them supported by the magazine, okay? But that's where that myth got propagated from this weapon. And they took, they took that issue and brought it to, the, to, an, to a weapon system that didn't matter, okay? So we've covered positions, and we're going to cover in more depth when we get actually on the range. We're going to do football huddles, and we're going to work on that out there, okay? What is the next fundamental that we need to worry about? Breathing. Remember I said earlier that breathing may not be the issue while you're stringing those shots up and down? We all should know that if I'm in the process of aiming and I am actively breathing, that is going to disturb the lay of the rifle. Would you agree? If you utilize breath control correctly, we can utilize that as an aiming technique. How do you think I would do that? How do you think I would do that? You can, you can write it down how you're breathing, what you're looking for, if you're mills, and you can see how many mills go up and down with each breath. Okay, let's make it more simple. If I know I have a given range to a target, and I already have a given zero for that given range, and I'm trying to steady myself, I can allow my breath control, breathing in and breathing out, allow it, allowing that to align that crosshair Stop that, breath, stop that breath cycle when I get the crosshair where I want it and start placing uh, some pressure on the trigger. <coughs> what that's referred to is breathing the sights to center. Okay? But what I want, to, want you to understand is how many of you have ever tried to hold something very, very, very still? When you're trying to hold something very, 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 very still, I would submit to you that you stop breathing. Do you know why? It's a natural human function. When you breathe in and out and those sights are moving up and down, are you really moving your sights this far off a target causing you to string bullets? No. So what I want to do is I want to talk about how to utilize a breathing technique. All right. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to breathe in, breathe out, relax, press the shot. What I would prefer to do, instead of breathing in to align my sights, I breathe in and breathe, them down, breathe my sights down onto the target. Does that make sense? Normally, you want to take the shot at the bottom of your natural respiratory pause. Breathe in, breathe out, come to that low, that natural respiratory pause, and that's when you want to place your shot. Is that always the perfect scenario? Are you always going to be able to completely relax before you take a shot onto a target? No. Then I want, to use, want you to use interrupted breathing. Interrupted breathing is basically stop. All right. One of the things I use when I have to take a quick snapshot is I'll go, and I'll real quick blow a little bit of air out of my lungs. Tighten my abdominals or my flabdominals, depending on your physical fitness level. I will real quick just go, tighten my abdominals, steady the sights, press, boom, boom. You see what I'm doing? I'm just getting enough oxygen to allow my, my eyes to stay clear. But I'm tightening my abdominals just enough to tighten my body up get it rigid, get the sights aligned, press through smoothly, and get the next shot. That is a technique of in, um, interrupted breathing, okay? Are there any questions? Now what I'm going to do is basically tell you that the diagnosis of those strong shots are probably not positioned and probably not breathing. So what do you think it is? Sight picture. Sight picture. 
It is my opinion that the army focuses so much on sight picture that they miss the problem or they miss the real issue. What is sight alignment? Eye to sight to target. Sight alignment, a perfect condition with a set of iron sights is when the clear tip of the front sight post is vertically and horizontally aligned in the rear sight aperture. Textbook. What does that mean? What does that mean with an optic? Do you know you have to practice sight alignment with an optic? Did you know that? One of the biggest problems we have with optic is it magnifies the target. and People start looking at the target and not the reticle. Did you know that? What we're going to talk about is sight alignment, sight alignment, sight alignment, sight alignment. How many of you, when you're shooting a 25 meter target, align your sights, look down range to make sure that those front, that front sight is perfectly aligned in the center of the target, look back at your sights to make sure that they're aligned, look back at the target to make sure that they're in the center of that area, look back at the freaking front sight post and somewhere in there you pulled the trigger to make sure that your alignment is right. How many of you do that? Come on, think about what I'm saying. Are you looking downrange at the target? That's why you're stringing shots. So what I want everybody to do is take their finger and stick it right out in front of them, just like this. All right? What I want you to do is, as hard as you can, focus 100% of your visual acuity on the very tip of your thumbnail. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to place that over the center of something. Some of you that are pointing this way, stick it over the center of this red sign. Those of you that are down there, stick it in the middle of that black uh, round thing that's down there on the end of the wall there. All right, find a point on the wall. And what you're going to do is I want you to look at your finger as hard as you can. Can you clearly see whatever it is that is beyond that thumb? If you're looking 100% at that thumb, now what I want you to do is look real hard at your thumb and then look at the object. Look past your thumb and look at the object. Now look back at your thumb. Now look at the object. Now look back at your thumb. Now look at the object. All right, now look at me. How many of you noticed that your thumb is doing this? You know why it's doing this? Your body naturally when you're looking at this and you focus your, your, your vision outward, your body naturally wants to get whatever this is in the way out of the way. Does that make sense? I just proved to you that you're doing it. You may not realize it. Your body is saying, get it out of the way so I can see that. Okay, great. Now I got to look back at that. Uh, all right, get it out of the way so I see that. And you're doing this. What I submit to you is when you're doing that with a rifle in your front sight post, and you've got those, that rear sight horizontally aligned in the rear sight aperture, or that front sight in the rear sight aperture, and you're looking down range to make sure that front sight post is perfectly in the middle of that target, and then you look back at the sight, and you look back at the target, and you look back at the sight, you're doing this with the rifle, and you don't even know it. And somewhere in there, you're pulling the trigger, and you're stringing bullets up and down, and some jackass comes by and says, watch your breathing. Okay? Would you believe, would you agree that that could be propagating ignorance? All right. Refuse to propagate ignorance. Refuse to do it. Educate it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to accept the fact that when I align a set of iron sights onto a given target, that that target, at the moment of release or at the moment you're going to take the shot, must not be clear. You have to trust yourself that you will naturally align those sights in the center of that given target, and you must trust yourself that the target's just going to be blurry. Now, does that work with the optic? Not completely, but yes. Go ahead. Uh, just what he was saying, stick your thumb out, okay? And we're going to need both hands for this, so if you've got something in one hand, stick yours somewhere else. Find that one spot underneath your thumbnail that you're going to focus on, all right? Now with your other hand, make a hole about the size of a quarter, all right? Put it in front of your shooting eye. Still focusing on that. Pull it up to your face. Now, still focused on that dot. Put your thumb, center mass, on your buddy. Just find something put it center mass. Stay focused on your thumb. Now, just using your peripheral vision, 
Look how centered your thumb is in the hole that you made. What is that? That's side alignment, right? Now, stay in focus. Notice how center mass you are on your butt. Using your peripheral vision. Don't look away from your thumb. Just kind of look around it with your peripheral vision. Notice how the thumb is center mass on your buddy. Notice how the thumb is in the center of the hole. You have just perfected side alignment, side picture, by doing what you're supposed to do. Funny how it works, isn't it? It works naturally. We just sometimes we work against it because we don't know that we're working against it. How many of you look at a picture on a wall and can tell it's crooked without busting out the tape measure? The brain works, guys. The brain works. Let it do its job. Okay. We're all about we're all about symmetry. When I say symmetry, it's it's naturally making sure that lines are square with each other. Things are level. Well, you know, as we look through the room. To build what off. We do that as we walk over the picture. To, mirror, right? to build off what the Master Sergeant is saying, do you know why we live in, oh, I used to give a class on, basically, do you know why we live in square houses? Why do we build our houses square? Why are our tables square and or round? <coughs> Aesthetics. We are geometrical creatures, okay? We naturally see that. Why are the windows square? Well, A, it's aesthetically pleasing, and B, it's easier to freaking build. You can draw a bunch of lines, right? We naturally align things. We, we put things in order. Once you become a sergeant major, you'll be aligning chairs. You know what I'm talking about. I wish my sergeant major was in here to hear that. That was a funny joke. Okay? Allow it to do it. So basically, all I want you to deal with or think about when, we're align when we start shooting these iron sights is Stick the front sight post, the clear tip, the top leading edge, the center of the top leading edge, in the middle of that rear side aperture, in the middle of that fuzzy blob, start moving the trigger smoothly. It's that simple. Now, I've covered position, and we're going to cover that big, big time in depth in football huddles out on the range, okay? We've covered breathing, and we've talked about techniques that will allow us to be successful uh, when we have time and when we don't have time to press a shot off smoothly. We've covered sighting. We haven't done it with this optic yet. The way I like to explain an optic is, I just went over how to utilize a set of iron sights. Would you agree? Would you, would you agree that the optic works the same way? And why would you agree or disagree? The brain is gonna work the same way no matter what you're given. So. Instead of a rear side aperture, you have a rear ocular, uh, a rear ocular bell, okay? You have a hole you're looking through, would you agree? The rear side is a hole you're looking through, right? You probably want to center your face so you're looking through the center of that rear sight, would you agree? Then why wouldn't it apply to a, to a scope? If you're looking at the front sight post and you want that front, the, that clear tip of that front sight post centered vertically and horizontally in the rear side aperture, why wouldn't you want the reticle that's inside the optic to be centered in the hole you're looking through? Would that make sense? Would that make sense? The only other thing that we're going to talk about it when we get out on the range is how many folks know what parallax is? One or two or three or four. All right, real quick, when you deal with magnified optics, what you see is not always what you're getting. All right? So what we're going to do is we're going to play the guns out online, and what, what we're going to do is we're going to move our head like this, and if the target and the reticle are moving different, you have a condition of parallax. And what we're going to do is we're going to explain to you and show you how to utilize your parallax parallax adjustment knob out here to allow that when you move your head around this ocular bell, both of those things, the reticle <coughs> and the target, are on the same plane. So one's not moving away from each other. Does that make sense? I shot optics for a long time, and I had coaches that used to say, your head position's moving, your head position's moving. And I got accused of having shot groups. I'd have a little group over here, 
and one over here, and one over here, and one over here, and I'm chasing these little groups all over the target. And I got a coach that's telling me, your head position's moving. Damn it, I'm telling you it's not. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure out why I shot iron sight so much better than optic. And until somebody explained to me what parallax was, and I went, my coach is screwed up. Because he only knew what he knew and he didn't know what he didn't know. So I will say a lot of times when we're shooting these groups, you got a group over here, a group over here, a group over here, a group over here, the parallax adjustment isn't adjusted correctly to allow you to keep both of those targets in the same plane. Does that make sense? We're going to talk about how to do that, and we're going to go over that in depth when you do your zero in question, sir. Is the parallax caused by the multiple lenses? The parallax is caused by the multiple lenses that are stacked in in different arrays inside the optic. Okay. Going. First mistake. Because, you know, because you're not viewing the speedometer from the correct perspective. Okay? How that translates to a scope is you don't have the lenses aligned or the focus such that, or the parallax adjustment such that you are seeing it from the correct perspective. Okay? So you're bringing it all in line to your shooting eye. And that's why it's different from one guy to the next. So if you pick up your rifle and adjust the parallax out, it's not going to be the same for the buddy, is it? Okay, so it is an individual adjustment. Just so, so everybody has a little clearer understanding of what the term parallax is. Yeah. Okay. What, what you'll see is, one thing that you'll see with very accomplished rifle shooters who are used to shooting glass, is they'll get behind a gun and they'll start, and, and they'll get behind the gun, they'll get their head position and they'll go. And they'll just make circles with their head. You know what they're doing? They're checking that parallax. All right? A lot of your really high-end rifle shooters will do that. Okay, we're good. Before they even take a shot. So they're on a correct perspective before they fire a shot. All right? We're going to teach you how to do that. The last thing I want to cover is the most important fundamental of marksmanship. If you don't remember anything that it comes out of my mouth this entire time, there's one thing that will take all those things I just freaking told you, it, no matter what you do, if they're absolutely perfect, one thing will screw it up every time if you don't apply it. What's that fourth and final? Trigger. I like to say trigger control. Because is trigger squeeze fast? Is trigger, is trigger squeeze slow? Is it at a medium pace? So trigger squeeze or trigger control has no speed. But one thing that it does have, it has consistency and it has smoothness. What does that mean? What does that mean to you? It's the same every time. It's not necessarily the same every time. And the reason why I say that a trigger, trigger control can be fast. It can be slow. Will, it be, will that make, would it make sense that that wouldn't be the same every time? <coughs> It's the same type of motion, you just sped it up, and it's always smooth. So what I want to talk about is how you're going to use trigger control with these combat guns. How and where have we been told to place our trigger finger when we're talking about a gun? What portion of our trigger finger should be on the trigger? The meaty portion. Anyone else? Anyone else? In the bend of the second part, anyone else? Let me see. Stand up. Put your hand up there. Would you agree that my hand is radically larger than his? Right? Would you agree that my hand and his hand are probably pretty close? Pretty close, right? So him and I would probably some, be somewhat similar. Would you agree? Put your hand up there. Would you agree that his hand is smaller than mine? Okay. So if I told everyone out there that the tip of your finger must be on the trigger, what is that going to do to somebody who's got a gorilla hand like mine? 
I'm, it's going to require me to skew something. First thing we're talking about, and the first thing we need to do when we deal with trigger control, is we must establish the grip. The grip is the base of the movement. The grip is everything. What's the difference between pink and blue? It's the grip. Get your dirty minds out of the gutter and think about what I just said. All right? Remember when I was talking about how Sergeant Anderson was holding the gun? He got his hand high up into that pistol grip, way high into it. Why? So he has control over it. And then he placed his trigger finger where it naturally wants to lay. In my particular case, it happens to be right between the distal joint. We're just slightly forward of the distal joint right here. Why would I not want to put the tip of my finger on a trigger? I could wind up pulling the rifle to the right or pulling it to a skew or skewing where the rifle is pointed while I'm pulling the trigger. Who does that? Mostly bench rest shooters who have about six ounce triggers. Does this trigger weigh six ounces? Does the force applied or does the force you have to apply to the trigger to get it to trip the hammer and fire the gun weigh probably more than four and a half to five pounds? Would you agree? Yeah, it's a significant amount of weight. How many of you would go to the grocery store and grab a, uh, a gallon of milk and pick it up with the tip of your finger? It doesn't make sense, does it? Then why are they telling us to pull these heavy combat triggers with the tip of our fingers? It doesn't make sense. So what I'm gonna do is try to make sense to you. You're gonna get a high firm pistol grip, you're gonna wrap those fingers around that thing and then you're gonna place that trigger finger where it naturally wants to lay. That's all I'm saying. You have gotta get that high firm pistol grip where you can hold it tightly, maintain control, and place your trigger finger in there where it naturally wants to lay. That will allow you to maximize your leverage over the system. Does that make sense? All right, now then the next thing what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a technique that will allow us or cause us to follow through. All right, it's a trigger manipulation technique which will cause soldiers to continuously apply those four fundamentals after the shot is fired, okay? All of you have pulled the trigger on these so far, haven't you? You'll notice it's a two-stage trigger, would you agree? So you're going to bring up the first stage you're going, to, you're going to bring up the first stage. You're going to hit what we call proverbially the wall. And then you're going to squeeze through it. And the gun's going to fire. Are you immediately going to remove your finger to go back forward? You're going to hold it to the rear. Now, most of your scout snipers are told, press. And once the gun fires, hold, release. Right? Now, I don't know what the Army teaches at Scout Sniper School, but it's something along the lines of that. After you deliver the shot, it's press, hold, release. Hold for about two seconds after you fire the shot, then work the bolt. What I would like you to do when you fire this gun, you're going to press, you're going to come up to the wall, press, hold, hold the trigger to the rear for about two seconds, and release. Why? I want you to be looking at the reticle, centered in the target, holding that rifle firmly, and having, when you fired that shot, everything stopped and was firm and deliberately delivered. And you maintained that for a couple of seconds after the shot. Does that make sense? We will, we will talk about how to do that when we get out to the range again. All right? Question, sir. One way it's going to be very glaringly obvious with these rifles, because we've seen this over and over and over again. When you squeeze that trigger and the rifle goes bang, bang, that, meant you, that tells me you were jumping off the trigger. Because the recoil, when it comes back and you jump off the trigger, the recoil, when you go to react to it, you slam your finger into the trigger again. It's not the rifle that's messed up. It's you. It's going to be cool. It's going to happen to one or, five, one or so, one or two of you. And if it does, it's not, it's, a, not, it's not like it's a bad thing. It's just we need to correct it. Does that make sense? 
I'm not going to yell at you. We might make fun of you for a minute, but we're going to fix it. Because you'd make fun of me if I did it, wouldn't you? Yeah, you would. Yes, you would. All right, so gentlemen, what we've color covered so far is aiming, we've covered breathing, we covered trigger control, and we covered positions, all right? Most of this will be recovered, like I said, out on the football huddles. Are there any questions? Are there any comments or observations, or have I co covered this different than you may have heard it before? Sir? Mm -hmm. Do we walk around, when I bring my hand up, is that a natural position? Wouldn't that be more natural? You see what I'm saying? I, uh, you know what seismology is? It's basically the study of how the body works. Okay. If you look at some of those books, which is a really great book that you, if you want to read, are, um, Sergeant Anderson's going to disagree with me, but Lanny Basham writes a book with winning in mind. Okay. There are some other books that are about Olympic sport shooting, and it, uh, which which oh, what's the book? Bill Pullum, yes, Bill Pullum, uh, positions. What he talks about is he goes into how the body works with different positions. It's a really great book. It's only about. No, I think that book to get it in paperback is only about thirteen, fourteen dollars. Oh yeah, about thirteen or fourteen dollars. It's an awesome read. Uh, but what it, what it talks about is natural positions that your body naturally wants to go in. And I will tell you this. What we found with the folks that I work with, one of the reasons they stopped teaching folks to shoot their pistols like this is because under duress, people naturally went like this. You see what I'm saying? And what we're, gonna, what we're trying to capture in this course and what we're going to teach you out on the range is what your body's naturally going to do when it's under duress and you have to do something quickly. So we want you, when you're in duress, when, you're, when your body and you have to press a shot off, we're going to already teach you how to be accurate with what your body's already going to naturally want to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. Did that cover your question? Now, another part of that, too, though, is... Sergeant Arthur Larry Smith tell, we are not size, same size and shape, Mr. Peach, as, as are none of you. But if you look down this line of rifles, those are all the same size and shape, aren't they? So we each have to kind of one size fits all with the gun. Does that make sense? So <coughs> how, how you accomplish it is not going to be the same as how he does it or he does it. But with what we teach you, hopefully, sort of body configuration aside, we'll all look similar. Does that make sense? Okay. There are a lot of similarities where you can teach. I hate teaching specificity in positions. I hate being nailed down to specifics. Your foot must do this, this must do this, this must do this. There are generalities that work with everybody. There are stereotypical generalities that are going to work with everybody. It doesn't matter. But there are some folks that have a little larger table muscle than some of you ha guys have. So am I going to be able to get in the same type of prone position as you are? You know, some of our, our physiology itself being different may cause us to have to do something just slightly different than the standard stereotype. But like Sergeant Anderson said, for the most part, you're all going to look alike. Any other questions, comments, or observations? Sergeant LaForest. Last thing I wanted to cover, and I almost forgot to do it when I talked about positions. Everybody put your arm out, your, your shooting arm. If you're right-handed, put your right arm out, all right? How many of you have been told that you place the rifle in the butt, you place the butt stock of the rifle into the pocket created by the shoulder, and you find that by doing this? That makes sense? That makes sense? No, it doesn't. That's about as, that is one of the biggest things that, Made no, makes no sense to me, and I'm going to explain to you why. When I take this rifle and I do that, and I do that exercise, when I when I perform that exercise, what you're going to see is where that where that where that uh, stock actually winds up. So I find the freaking pocket of the shoulder. It's about right there. Correct. 
So if I place that buttstock into that pocket of the shoulder, what do I have to do to get my head to that gun? Now, my question is, do we walk around like this all the time? If you have some special needs, you might, okay? But for the most part, most American soldiers, by the simple fact that you're here and you went through MEPS, we pretty much got an idea that you don't walk around like this, except for some of the folks that Sergeant Anderson has recruited, but we won't talk about that. It's all about making mo mission. Gotta love you. All right? It's a numbers game, man. It's a numbers game. Don't judge me. So when you get in behind this gun, what I want you to do is I now want you to go, same, same thing, find that pocket, and then what I want you to do is take your thumb like I'm doing it, and you're going to find an inner pocket that's just slightly inboard to that. That's where you're going to put the buttstock of the rifle. Well, damn, Soren, how do I find that easily? I'm going to show you how you find it easy. You don't have to do any kind of goofy exercises to find this. All you need to do is, when you grab the buttstock of the rifle, and you place it up high next to your what, Sergeant Anderson? You place the rifle up next to your neck and then seat the rifle back, it'll automatically go perfectly where it needs to go. When we put the rifle in our shoulder, we don't put it in our shoulder and then put our head to the gun. We bring the gun to our head and seat it back. Notice how my head is straight. All I have to do is drop it straight onto the gun. You see what I'm doing? If I place it into that arbitrary pocket that I'm told about, what do I got to do? Now I have to go to the gun instead of bringing the gun to me. That makes sense? One other thing with that too. Once you place the rifle butt into the shoulder, okay, do not push your shoulder into the butt, okay? With the pressure of the firing hand, wrap high and firm on the shoulder, with that pressure, that pulls it into the shoulder and seats it, okay? Don't push your shoulder, don't shrug your shoulder into the gun, okay? Use the, the, the power of the pistol grip. And the grip on the pistol grip to pull the, the, the rifle into the shoulder. So again, you don't, you don't take your head to the gun, you bring the gun to the head. Okay? All right. All of this right here. Saying that, everybody go back to your weapon. I want you to take the, the forward portion of the gun just like I have it. Leave it on the table if you, mu if you must. And I want you to take, I want you to practice putting the gun up next to your face and let the gun come straight back into your shoulder. Put it up against your face, your chin, right here, and bring it right back to your shoulder. Notice how your head drops right straight onto the stock when you do that. Now just try to get the forward elbows on the table for support. There you go. Get the forward elbows on the table for support. You're taking the gun, you're putting it straight up next to your neck and your chin. Do you see how straight and more erect your head position is behind that gun? Take your head straight up. If you, and what's cool about it is if ever, when everybody is pointing in this general direction, I can see how Fubar, Sergeant Anderson, can you, can you help him out right there? With everybody pointing in this general direction, I can see if you need any further instruction. But you, do you now see how straight you are behind the, behind the gun? When we cover it like this, and is that different from your position you may have had in the past? Not that, not that much difference. Now watch your head is you're bringing your head way over. See how, how much farther in into your body I just brought that. Is that does it help? Does it hurt? Or does it have no effect at all? It feels straighter. What I'm trying to get, what I'm trying to get through to you is just this little exercise. When you go down in the prone position out on the range, will allow you to get straighter behind the gun. And the straighter you are behind this gun, the more uh, likelihood your position is going to take up some of the recoil of this gun, which can help you in. <laughs> later on being able to deliver rapid fire uh, follow-on shots. Would that make sense? Okay, we're good.